Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and today we've got a fun one for you, man. If you remember recently in an episode, we went out to the Hoonigan Burnyard and we saw this car getting after it. So we invited Josh to come over and shoot with us and he was kind enough to bring his car out. This is gonna be a fun one to get into because he's built this car from the ground up, has owned this car since he's 19 years old, done all the work that you see on it himself. So we're gonna dig in, get into all the details, and we are definitely gonna go do some Hoonigan type stuff. So hold on, cause here we go, man. Hey guys. This is our friend, Josh Mason. Guarantee you, a lot of you probably know him better than you know me, but tell me about it. It's a 68 Camaro. I know that much. 1968 Camaro. It sat in the backyard for 20 years because uh, a son owned it. It was a high school kid. He was street racing it. Dad got pissed, made him park <laughs> it. And when it parked, it parked for 20 years. It had a 327 in it, the stock Saginaw Trans. There was vines growing in it. And it probably could have drove, but the brakes didn't work. It's like, no, let's trailer it. So he trailered it to my shop, rolled in my shop, and I took it down to a shell. Like every nut and bolt. It was a okay. complete car, full interior, but took it down to a shell. I knew I was going to completely build the car. I bought it when I was 19 years old, just after I graduated high school. Okay. And the whole process took me about seven years of my time and about. I have about 50 grand into this car, my own money. I think if I had someone else to do it, it probably would have cost me close to maybe $80,000, not right. too sure. And it kind of was like a, I want to drift it and I want to autocross it. But the thing was, every time I put it on the autocross course, anytime it got sideways, I had more fun doing that. So it wasn't about the time anymore. It was like, let's right. put this car sideways everywhere. <laughs> and then it, the car just became a drift car. Like that's really your thing, obviously. That's yes. what you really are passionate about when it yes. comes to driving is drifting it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was a drag racer before. I started into junior drag racing uh, when I was eight years old. And once I got my driver's license, moved up into a super gas roadster. And then once I kind of discovered turning corners and not just going straight, it was like, yeah. wow, I kind of like this. I like yeah. turning corners. I like putting the car sideways. And that's when uh, me and my grandfather sold the drag car and we got this car and basically started from the ground up. It's been a drift car ever since. Now, is that still the 327 the car came with? No, this is actually a completely uh, different engine. It's a fully built engine. Uh, it's a dart block, Eagle rods, Eagle um, crank, uh, I think Eagle pistons off the top of my head, Edelbrock heads. This motor actually I didn't build. Every, all my other motors I build. This was the first motor I didn't build. It was built by Brian Nopert. He builds uh, Grove's uh, trophy truck engines. Okay. So um, he put it together. I believe it's 10 to one compression. Still runs on pump gas. Uh, it's a 383 stroker. Holly 750 uh, double pumper carburetor. It's got all the knickknack valve train. Still a hydraulic roller. I think okay. it's comp lifters with manly push rods and comp rocker arms with a comp girdle. I want to say maybe it's around 400. I do know for a fact the engine is 512 to the crank. Okay. I got to imagine you've done suspension work on this. This isn't stock Camaro. No. The only thing stock about this car is probably the shell. That's about it. Got it. Jesus. So like chassis you've even done? And... Ch yes. It's the stock subframe for the front. It's got aftermarket tubular A-arms on Corvette C5 uh, spindles. It's got a Corvette front brake system. And when the rear suspension you know, a factory uh, Camaro comes with leaf springs. Right. So I decided to upgrade. I was kind of in between a triangulated four link or a three link torque arm. And it was kind of a new thing to me, the torque arm kind of deal. So it was kind of like, why not let's build this and just see what it does and developed a torque arm rear suspension for it uh, myself. I think they came with a stock Chevy 10 bolt rear end. We swapped it out with a Ford nine inch. Uh, just to make it bulletproof and also parts yeah. are available everywhere for a Ford nine inch. For sure. So uh, we did that to the rear suspension. So the original transmission was a Saginaw Trans four speed and I swapped it out to a Tremec TKO 600. Uh, it was just the first thing I seen in the Jegs catalog that looked pretty good with a five speed overdrive. Hey, why yeah. not, let's try it out. Yeah. It's been a great transmission. Uh, I beat the crap out of it for the last like four years and I've had- Same trans, you've never had to rebuild it or anything? Same trans. Same trend. Wow. Never had to do anything. All the fab work I've done is literally all my fab work. So I've done the roll cage, uh, I've done this uh, semi kind of engine cage here. I'm not entirely sure if it really helps it out a bunch because I never driven it without this. But you know, I've seen a lot of the pro touring cars doing it. So I figured why not put that in there. And at the same time when, you know, I got this car, you know, I was 
20, 21 years old, super young. Like, I mean, I knew how to fab, but I was still kind of in that learning stage. Yeah. So when I look at the cage now, I'm like, oh, I want to cut that thing out and start over. <laughs> you know? I, know, I know a few things now, you know. I know I get a lot of questions on my uh, LED lights that I got down here as well. Yeah. Everybody asks me if I have a mount kit for this or like, where did I find the mount kit? Yeah. I just bought these on eBay. They're 12 inch LED double row lights that I got again on eBay and mounted it myself uh, on some one inch tubing. Oh yeah. So it's not really a bolt in kit, but I'm kind of thinking about maybe making a kit because I've had so many people wanting Great to do idea. the similar yeah. thing. And that's another thing. A lot of these parts that I've put into this car as well are actually like eBay parts. I know a lot of people like knock eBay stuff, but it kind of depends like when it comes to like motor stuff or like anything suspension wise, I don't really skimp out on stuff like that, but yeah. like little things like lights and stuff like this. Why not? Why not? If, if it money. blows out, buy another one. Right. Front fenders are 67 uh, front fenders instead of 68. The 68 okay. fenders come with the little side marker lights here. So oh, when yeah. you buy the 67, you don't have to shave it. So I did 67 That's front really fenders. That's really but it's the same shape otherwise. It fits same, right in. Same shape, same uh, bolt pattern, I guess you can say. Yeah. So it's just less body work you have to do. Little what are your like wheels that. on here? These actually... <laughs> These are like, they're he like, laughs as he's about to tell us the wheel. Because I get a lot of like crap for having running like fake wheels. But you know what? When, when I do stuff like this or at the burn yard and I wreck wheels, they're cheap. They're just knock yeah. off uh, like BBS LMs. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. that's what I ran here. They're 19 inch uh, front and back and a uh, mile star tires. Uh, this exhaust, I fabricated myself all out of three inch oval stainless, uh, fully TIG welded. Like I said, all the fab work is done by me, uh, including the cage. I did some mild fab work to the dash. These seats are twisted stitch seats, also now owned by Simpson. And I think twisted stitch isn't even around anymore, but they're also uh, heated seats. No shit. Yeah. In this car, they're heated yeah, seats? Yeah, they're heated seats. <laughs> yeah. You're loving it. <laughs> No air conditioning though, but hey, when it's when it's cold outside, you're loving it. Definitely got to use the heated seats. Yeah, I know that's a hydraulic brake, right? Yes. Explain how it works. So the drift guys, there's either two concepts. You can either run a dual rear caliper, so right. meaning you got two calipers per uh, side, right? Or you can run the same normal calipers on like a slave cylinder, uh, plumbed already in your existing brake system. But when you run a slave cylinder, the problem is you don't get that that feel like it doesn't lock up initially. You kind of have to like pump them up. So instead you spend the extra money, get an extra set of calipers that are dedicated purely to the handbrake. So when I rip that handbrake, the rest of the brake system has nothing to do with it. Only the separate set of calipers that you see here are basically working. So these front calipers here are the normal pedal brakes. Right. This caliper right here is just dedicated towards the handbrake. Got it. Okay. And then this rear spoiler here, uh, these supports, I designed in a CAD program. I'm a little bit of a CAD designer too. I don't have the CNC laser machine. I wish I did, but yeah. I just give my buddy the file. He'll cut it out for me. I designed these in the computer. He cut them out. But this spoiler right here, I cut on my bandsaw, like hand cut with my bandsaw out of a sheet of aluminum. And this hinge is piano hinge from Home Depot. And curious, is this, is this more of a look or is this actually doing is this actually giving you downforce? I believe it is actually giving me downforce. I did take the car on Auto Club Speedway and yeah. I was coming into like turn one on the long straight and the car just felt like it was on the ground. Got and it. I was doing maybe about 140 miles an hour. I felt like I was doing 200. <laughs> like, but I really believe it is doing something Maybe, yeah. I don't know. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I love this, right? He says, you know, the car hasn't been cleaned in a while. He cleaned it up before coming over here. Look at this, <laughs> look at this. This is cleaned up, you guys. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta let the people know. I gotta let the people know it does things. Well, dude, I wanna know what it feels like to sit in the passenger seat and get sideways. So let's go for a ride, Make man. Make some tire art. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
fucking Where awesome. Where do you think we are right now? Holy shit, dude. That is so cool. You gotta take it in? Yeah. All right, you guys, that is it for our shoot with Josh and his very cool 68 Camaro. And you know, this isn't typically what we do around here, but the level of control this guy has, he's a drift driver, he's headed towards pro at this point. And I love the fact that he built this car himself. He knows every detail about the car because he did build it. Just absolute blast for me today. I mean, this is very different for us. I'm the one jacked up and tripping out right now. Josh is as cool as possibly could be. Just had a blast. So I hope you guys had fun in this episode. As always, I say thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we're up to. You know I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later. <laughs>